All right. Um, thank you so much for being here. And I think the purpose of, of this uh, event really is to give you a chance to interact with the artists. You're often interacting with the artworks and, and the artists, is, as it was, speaks to the artwork. Uh, but now you have a chance to interrogate or, ha or engage with the artists and, um, and you know, share with them your thoughts of, of what you are feeling about the work or think about the work. Uh, I'd like you to participate as much as possible. I'm just really the moderator for the morning. Uh, we have about 20 minutes for each of the artists. Um, and uh, you know, feel free, I, whatever your background might be, you might actually be an art historian or you might just be somebody who walked off the street this morning and decided this would be a good thing to do. So whatever it is, uh, and whatever questions you want to ask, they're completely legitimate and really open to having um, um, a lively and uh, you know, interesting discussion. So let's start with Paiman and, and the, his work here. And I'm going to ask him, um, as you might want to know, is like what exactly is the work and what is it trying to uh, communicate, uh, whether intellectually or in terms of feelings and emotions, and, um, and then we can start the conversation there. So Paiman, just tell us about the work. Assalamualaikum, salam sejahtera. Okay, uh, my, uh, my work is, uh, actually, I'm not the person who always regularly to do the works in the studio. Anyway, I don't have a studio. I don't believe because for me, if God switch off your mind, you couldn't think. Okay, that 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 is me. Okay, uh, during two years ago, which there is a lot of situation happen in the world. Okay, with the COVID and the time of the COVID, that is politics per se in the world that uh, a person who tried to, co uh, to collapse the, the government such as in Mongolia, such as in Slovakia, uh, in, in Japan, whatever, uh, but it might be not in Malaysia. Uh, so uh, that thing is uh, something that disturbing me. But anyway, I try to create a thing which uh, the narrative is come from the fiction history, where I'm talking about uh, which a dewa we come to the world, a monk uh, that pergi ke suatu tempat uh, untuk mentabi urus suatu bumi yang mana bumi itu he give all the peoples, the human, to be love each other. That means all sharing each other. So, for 400 years, it's okay. It's quite beautiful. People, people love each other. But anyway, he got a sign from the God, it might be. So, he said that you must go to another, uh, another space because your, your job is done. Okay? So, uh, he got the sign that, uh, so you must dayong the sampan, go to the middle of the oceans, and then you cut your tongue. The, uh, okay, this is the, 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 the dewa, yeah? okay? Cut the tongue, and then you throw, throw it away in the, yeah, in, in the sea, so suddenly it will be a, an island. So, he said to the follower that one day he will be going out, and then there is a place that will be, is really rich with all the soil, all the plants, whatever. So they start to, uh, you must leave each other and respect each other by using the same, the, the same model that I have done. Okay, after that, they gone and then he cut the, the tongue and then throw it away. But suddenly, they have a person who really know how to manipulate. Okay, the manipulate of the area. So you can see in this place, this is the tongue. Here. Yeah. Uh, the, this is the, 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 the map, which all the area of taste. Okay, sweet, bitter, or some whatever. Hold. Half uh, around, uh, is half uh, seven area. So they try to conquer all the all, uh, all the all the border, 
okay, they have 222 of person who use uh, who make the ideology to hating each other or say that something hey, you look here this is belongs to you is not belongs to them okay so they they, they couldn't uh, eat, live at each other anymore so that's mean the territory had been conquered by 222 person uh, so uh, that's I call it in Malay proverb. Uh, they use only the saliva. Okay, I know. In Malay, we call it bermodalkan ailio in the proverb. So that means that they they don't give a damn, but he they know how to say the something to uh, to convince the people to follow them. So that means uh, for this work, I take the sampling for two hundred twenty-two samples of saliva uh, in the works which mix around with the sodium oxide okay because sodium oxide is something who can grow the genetic so the genetic is talking about uh, uh, either to be a good person a good generation or bad generation anyway all of us what, what I mean is very good and really naive Something like that. But anyway, we had been manipulated by all the situations. So, uh, uh, therefore, this is my works. So, you can see all the arrangement by using 222 saliva belongs to the person who really want to share the knowledge with me. They come from another area, not the same area. Okay, only that I can... Uh... Yeah, this is fascinating. So I, I want to ask you for your response because, you know, a lot of us have been contributing saliva to test kits uh, to, uh, for, for COVID tests. I think if you do the RTK test. So um, it might be quite familiar to you, but this is a very elaborate... What Paiman has done is give you a sense of this elaborate mythology that he's created in order to, um, to assemble this work. Have you all had a chance to look at it? Have you any questions that you want to ask him about why he, you know, what was the purpose of this work? What was, is there some sort of overt meaning or multiple meanings in the work? Does anybody want to ask a question? Please. I want to ask why did you, uh, I wanted to ask why did you choose a, a, an installation like this? Like does this cart have a meaning uh, and, the, and the chimney on top? Okay, uh, this is, the, the, the chimney is sign of heat. This is what the climate had been, had been happened. Not only the climate change of the world, but also the politics and the humans. Okay, uh, and and uh, and the second thing is called uh, is it's like a push cart. The the form is like a push cart that I bring along this thing to tell somebody this is what what the thing. Uh, by using the uh, it might be in contemporary anthropology arrangements, uh, but we can see what happened that. They can negotiate. The 222 person can negotiate regarding about the powers. And then also, we, you can see, this is all the, uh, all the things that had been rebelled that we couldn't touch. In the democracy world, that we vote. But anyway, when they could be the representation, they never think ever about the vote anymore. And this is what, what, one of the examples. That all the the theater play is happen in it and we just see it in 360 degree around it yeah yeah, yeah. That, that, that is the, the thing and then it's really rustic the rustic is is talking ab, uh, about the times from the ancient until now the collapse of or the orchestra is because of how people ha clever to convince somebody to follow them with their ide ideology there's a lot of ideology we can see the ideology in, uh, in, in, in a good term, in positive or negative. Depends to the audience and the user. Right, so 222 members of parliament, right? I, I, I just give a suggestion. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I so, just give okay. a suggestion. Uh, and so, I mean, this, uh, and, the, and the metaphor and the idiomatic um, ex uh, use of uh, ILEO, as Paiman is suggesting, it's, they're really... I mean, snake oil uh, traders, you like, you know, they, but the, whatever it is, they, there's this power, there's a kind of magical power in the way people speak, right? I mean, this is yeah. what the politician does 
Um, it might be. It might be, it might be. <laughs> okay, so Paimon's work is very political. If you know uh, the sense of, if you have a sense of his previous work, it's, it can be very political. I want to ask you about, about artists dealing with politics, because there are a lot of works in this uh, exhibition that are about politics. Some of it's quite literal in the sense that it's translating an idea and, and representing it rather uh, kind of on the nose, very, in a very direct way. Is there a problem with that? I mean, what is it that you want people to do? They want to see this work. Do you want them to go out and do something as a result? Do you want them, are you trying to make them think more deeply about their relationship to their, to uh, elected members, uh, you know, they, whom they might have put in parliament? Okay, uh, actually this work, I couldn't say this work that people can save the world. <laughs> Only that. But anyway, I call myself as a backdated reporter. Where sometimes we uh, put the history at the back, but we ne ne never try to study and to question back about the history. Yeah, this is happened sometimes. A leader that today he says say something else, and tomorrow they say something else. Yeah, okay? Have a leader that in 2008, even if I'm mistaken, he said he can convince the devil to follow him. But in 2012, they'd be a good, a good partner. Yeah, I think he's still in yeah. power. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> I want to ask, anybody else have a question for Paiman about this work, about some of the ideas and what? Yes, please. Actually, could you uh, do you mind lowering your mask so we could actually hear you? Or It's okay, you're allowed to. Is this all right? Okay. Okay. So uh, I've actually two questions, particularly with regards to this panel, I suppose. Um, the map, if you will, I realize that the maps on it, the countries that you pick are um, compromised country. I don't know if that's the right word. Is there any reason behind that? And also, yeah. Okay. The reason I use this map because uh, which this is the country which had been told rightly in research where the highly corruption. Yeah, uh, this is the, the country. Yeah, uh, such as Ethiopia, Iran, Zimbabwe, Afghanistan, something like that. Yeah. So the second one? The second one is that I realized there's a 900 there. Yeah. Was that, is there any reason in particular there? Because you were saying that this is 222, right? But there's a 900 down there? Oh, that is something happened that sometimes there's a lot of things that, actually 222. Yeah, you really critical to see it. That I never, at that time, I never see. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That is mistake for me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, any more questions? Anybody want to ask Paiman about his process? How does he, um, you know, generate the ideas? Uh, why has he chosen this form in particular, or how does he? Was there a decision at some point where he, you know, um, uh, about what exactly this idea would sort of materialize itself in? Anybody have a question around process? Um, actually, I want to ask because uh, for the whole. Could you hold it? To, I can't, I can't hear anybody. <laughs> Oh, you can keep the mic on, but you can yeah, just, yeah. just put oh, the mic on. Okay. Uh, <laughs> the, the oh, God, okay. Uh, so, what I want to ask is, is that this whole card, did you find it, did you find it or did you make it? Because it looks very rusty, so in my, like, in my mind, oh, he found it somewhere abandoned and he just, you know, renovate it and make it like this. Concept. Or the whole thing. Yeah, conceptually, I do it myself. Uh -huh. But I know who can what Emily called Malaya Napsu Saya. <laughs> okay. uh, I know, who, who, I, I know who, who can make it, who can arrange it. Uh, one of the things that I cannot uh, arrange it very well, the sticker and my beloved wife, and my, she do it for me and then she really don't like it. <laughs> because we, she deal with the saliva. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. I'm very sorry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, the saliva is it? This is, this is real saliva, right? Yeah. Like someone said. So, who, like, how did you pick the samples of the people? That okay, okay, I negotiate with them. I need a permission saying that I make a work with, with which the work is conceptually about uh, uh, about how people use the tongue to say all the thing. Uh, so, 
do 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 they agree to take part with this work because this work this part of the fragment will be a part of the shows and then historical thing that will that you uh, the agreement happened that do you like it they say that they accept it that that's the way that that I negotiate with them okay. yeah how did you pick your samples is my question it's like uh just give me uh, the the people like how did you pick the yeah why these people specifically was there something special about these people that you decided to like random uh randomly uh, i think okay, yeah uh, okay. not not really because uh they know me yeah. and then sometimes they also don't know but uh they have a friends that i say this is my project i want to do this type of project but you can see the world now there's a lot of people make us sometimes uh love each other and hate each other and then they just only use the tongue and then the saliva to say the thing that is really open ended issues but anyway this is the thing that that, that is this is the project i do but they, they agreed it yeah i mean paiman there's also this other way in which uh, saliva gets used especially in malay society right it it can be used uh, as uh, as a way of blessing people right uh, it sort of the spit of a religious person might actually have power and so on does it, are there many other cultural layers to to the to the idea of saliva and and uh, sacredness or power okay actually my work is really open ended this is the time that what i what i'm thinking i need an audience response and then like you sharat they you give another response that it might be is used for uh, to make the work the narrative more wider angle to see right yeah i i don't have the the uh, the solid answer but anyway my work is in this time you just imagine for i just make this work is around 6 months then all the narrative i got for the 6 months okay i want to ask it anybody felt disgust i mean is the saliva invoke a sense of disgust in you but you look at a work that that is constituted by all these vials of of saliva is that something that disgusts you or is it a response are you thinking in the way that paiman sort of has framed his work currently means that it's political it's about this uh the way in which politicians use speech in order to uh you know um accumulate power if anybody have a, a, dis, a response different from what paiman has um sort of presented here that might help him understand his work and the way in which you know meaning is transformed in audiences rather than just in the minds of uh, uh artists and curators and you know are people who write critics it doesn't feel like disgust at all it just feels like such a medieval medical approach to the <laughs> yeah for yeah. me it felt like cabinet of curiosities yeah. the colonial cabinets of curiosities that yeah. were there where we used to you know store items that they brought from Absolutely. these parts of the world and took them back so for me that was what i was thinking but it did not feel disgusting yeah and well um to me i read it as like what was happening in malaysian politics in 2020 <coughs> 2020 but um i'm surprised that you had to create this story about the dewa and the lida and the i and and you know the conquering the 222 seats um i'm just wondering if the story is a way to i don't know escape censorship or somehow or is it part of the is it intentional in a different way yeah why not more more direct okay uh one thing that is talking about this is because i'm malay because i'm malay there is a lot of metaphor that can can can, can be used but anyway uh, what i what i'm doing at this moment is depends to the audience to think how their experience is more ex- important than my experience <laughs> okay the, the 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 important uh, because i have my own narrative but when you have your transcendental phenomenology which you what 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 your experience they try to merge it in this work is make the work i think so uh the narrative if in a more wider angle can see it might be in america people see like another thing like donald trump something like that yeah and then you can see what happened to the at this time we doing in japan which the prime minister that late abe happened we can see to relate the thing in 
in Japan also. Yeah. Because my work is, is really open-ended issues. Depends to the audience to respond. Okay. okay. Okay, thank you. So uh, we've done 20 minutes with uh, Paiman. Uh, now we're going to move to Izzat's work. Is that, this is Izzat. Thank you so much, Paiman. My thank pleasure. You. And you can thank always, you, you know, I mean, as long as he's here, you can thank speak you. to him. Okay. Um, so if you actually, if you go to the Ilham website, there, there are links to interviews that have been done or essays that have been written in collaboration with the artist. So if you want to get into a, a, a deeper sense of the, the works as they've described it to um, uh, critics. Uh, the website, the Ilham website is a, is a good guide for you. So uh, Izzat Arif, um, tell us about this work. Uh, chicken's very expensive and, and so is building a house at this point in time, owning one. Okay, but I'm sure that's not what you meant. Tell us a little bit about the, the work. Yeah, so, um I think uh, throughout my practice, I try to create these uh, portraits of uh, characters. So, uh, I think one of the first ones I did was a portrait of a curator and then a portrait of a, how to be a successful artist in Malaysia. And um, as I went along, the characters became bigger. So, um, I did a portrait of a, a developer. And uh, so for this one, um, initially I started off uh, with the idea of a portrait of a contemporary Malay man. So, um, yeah, so I tried to uh, overload the work with uh, symbolism and uh, sometimes unnecessary symbolism. And uh, yeah, so that's why you have um, all these uh, components. And um, as as uh, you know, throughout the making of it, throughout the thinking of it, um, it turned from a portrait to um, a proposal to um, replace these uh, huge uh, crest monuments with uh, this. This is a proposal for this monument, and it's a monument to um, to give homage to the contemporary Malay man. Instead of the crest, you know, very macho kind of. Uh, uh, structure. So this is. Uh, so uh, the contemporary Malay man yeah. is that you? Yeah, me. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And all <laughs> Who of Who is us, all about yeah. chicken? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So the so um, <laughs> the title BDE um, is also uh, another uh, an acronym for another thing, which I think most people know, and you can Google. What? Boycott, divest, and. No, 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 no. no, no. Yeah, you, have to, you have to Google. You have to, you have to Google this. Okay. Yeah, and um, yeah. So that's why I. Um, the configuration of the uh, component is in that form of the BDE. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah. so Malaysia's favorite protein yeah. and um, uh, Malaysia's favorite archite architectural, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah for, for homes. And sorry, kind of uh, reminds me of Kung Yu's work mm -hmm. and Chadangan, Chadangan ah, yeah. Nagaraku, right? Which is all about the, the columns. Um, anybody, so does anybody have a question for Izad about his process, I mean, he's already described, right, the idea of starting with, um, with uh, trying to create a portrait yeah. and, and now, and that, how that turned into a uh, proposal yeah. and portraits and proposal, that's yeah. very interesting. Uh, any questions for, is that? <laughs> and, and do you think this is, especially if you're a contemporary Malay man, I mean, if you're here, then I guess you're contemporary because you're still alive. Um, D does this speak to you? Is there something about this uh, that speaks to you? <laughs> yes, you are, you are, yes, women uh, yes. actually have a privileged position right. in um, contemporary uh, art. So. Okay, I'm not sure if this is more of a question. Do you or... hold it a little close because we can't hear Yeah, you. sure. Uh, is this all right? Okay. So i um, not sure if it's a question or just an observation, but um, anyway. So um, let's just be honest. This work is kind of phallic, isn't it? In uh, some sense. Yeah. yeah. Do, should I point it out? Yeah. Okay. You know, you know, <laughs> cop, chef. You know, and it's also in the, in the artist's um, write-up. He, he, you do make a point that it is yeah. phallic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah. it, um, in, well, I don't know if you, it feels like a 
uh, in installation uh, form of a, of a dick drawing on a, in a bathroom kind of a thing. <laughs> so, um, and then you say that this is a, 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 a representation of some sort of the contemporary Malay man. Yeah. Yeah. which you point out to be yourself as well. It so can be me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah. is this a, like a self-aware kind of a, um, work or is this in some sense of a, it is a cover of a much more uh, deeper meaning of like some sense of insecurity of like... Okay. Yeah. Mm. So, mm. Mm. so to what extent is this biographical or is this like a, so, a larger social critique? You don't, don't always want to talk about others without reflecting on yourself as well. But I have many encounters with these uh, very masculine Malay uncles and, and you know, trying to impose their values on you and blah, blah, blah. So this is, this is a work for them as well. And, and I hope I don't become like this. So also... So it's a, it's a doa for me, you know. So, yeah, and like uh, Sharad said, the Tiang um, is, is Western aspiration, you know. Many middle class houses have this to, to aspire to, you know, to, to have a Roman column. I don't know why, but I think it's uh, uh, like a contemporary Tiang Sri. Uh, tiang Sri. So, um, yeah, and then I engrave some very macho lyrics on it, which is the song. Um, yeah, so the M Nasir song. Yeah, Nasir song. Yeah, mm. uh, I, I, I'm not. I'm, I'm a fan. I'm not trying to diss M Nasir, and uh, yeah. So, but this is a very uh, macho song, and I think the the Chris monument is also macho kind of image. So, I just wanted to make my own macho. Monument. Yeah, so there's quite an interesting discussion about toxic masculinity, mm. nationalism yeah. uh, in, in, in more contemporary times. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, because of the whole question of Matkilao and then, uh. and then the Tanja and how the Tanja yeah. has become a, a symbol of that, yeah. right? So, along with the Kares and so. Yeah. Anybody else have uh, a response to the work that, and, and a question for Izzat? <laughs> Mm -hmm. Any particular reason why you have so many chickens, like, or it was just a, and why the color black? I think it's 14, maybe 13. I forgot. But you know, again, 13. 14, 13, 13 is the point of the stars, and then uh, it's black because originally it was roasted color. So I just want to like make it black to basically kill it again. And also, there's a kind of a deflation, right? Again, I mean, the work is, you say, it's, uh, it's, it's not heroic, it's not the caress, it's not metal, it's protein and a very cheap protein. And if it's supposed to be an image and a proposal for, um, for, uh, for a monument, then it has a kind of deflationary kind of thing, right? It's kind of like pulling the stuffing out of Malay masculinity and... I... Don't think a uh, sixty-foot Chris, <laughs> you know, is uh, is is effective in, in in capturing this spirit. I think uh, it needs to be a bit more uh, detailed, a bit more delicate. So I, it's many components. It's a very complex character. It's not just uh, uh, symbolized by one huge uh, monument. I mean, it's very interesting, right? India recently, India unveiled. Um um, I think um, some monument where the traditional Indian uh, uh, lion was snarling, right? And if you remember that, and you remember how Mahate changed the rhythm of our national anthem into this marching, and so the masculinist uh, ideology and tropes of, um, have actually uh, increased over the years. There's a, there's a deepening of that, right? And it seems to me that you kind of come at it in a very different uh, way. And anybody else? Sorry, I didn't mean I don't want to talk too much. Uh, um, does anybody else have a question or a query or want to um, ask? Yes, yes. There. Simple question. Uh, how funny you think you are? And how that contribute into your works? Could you, could you say a bit louder? How funny you think you are. Oh. I think you got the question. Uh, and how that contributes to your works. Well, you need to have fun while making work. And 
uh, joke around and not be so serious. I don't try to make funny works. Kind of serious when I'm making work. But you can't take yourself too seriously. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's a. Uh, yeah, I try to make it as, uh, as fun as possible, I guess. That's a weird question to ask somebody. How funny do you think you are? <laughs> you don't look in the mirror every morning and say, how funny am I? So, uh, yeah, so, yeah. Because it's a very typical Malaysian question that's much more like a threat when you say, yeah, oh, yeah. you think you're so funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah well, you maybe, know? maybe that's the, the question. And, then, and this is very interesting. So, <laughs> so this idea is not, it might not be a question about whether you're humorous or you uh, use irony in your work, but yeah. you say, oh, you think you're so funny because yeah. it's about saying, are you mocking something that I feel is precious and that you think somehow I, I don't so. get it because I'm stupid? Is that what, what's happening I, here? I, 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 I don't mind if you uh, get offended. Uh, well, so I don't mind if you have any other opinions about it, you know, so... Anybody offended? Anybody takes offense to this? Thinks that somehow this is an attack on something sacred? The idea of, you know, the centrality of the Malay man in modern Malaysia? All our prime ministers, <laughs> all GLC leaders, uh, you know? I think nobody offended, yeah. Anybody have a question about the other elements in it? The, the chicken, the column, the, the, the video work? Yes, please. I just, just speak up a little bit. Cause yeah, sure. So it's not about the elements or anything? Um, it's kind of continuing from that, was it fun to make this? Have you been talking with your friends or peers about this? Have there been any interesting takes from people who know you? Uh, yes, but to be honest, 90% uh, of it was fabricated um, in a factory. So that, it was on purpose to just let go and not, and to not um, be craft, crafty with it, you know. Um, everything was made to order. The chickens I bought in Shopee, you can buy, I can, I can give you the link. And plastic so, chickens, oh, we'll rubber chickens, rubber, rubber, rubber. <laughs> it's like the fruit, the rubber fruit, yeah, ah, the fake yeah, fruit, yeah. 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 So, um, but I think her question is slightly different. What she's asking you in your process, do you uh, do you engage with others? I mean, when you when it went from portrait to proposal, was it because you were engaged with others about your work? Is that is there is there a, a trajectory that involves conversations with other people? Is that your question? Yep, pretty much. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah, of course. Like before, I mentioned my encounters with uh, these uh, characters. So this is, I think, this is the engagement that you're asking. But also during the process of the work, um, you know, we engage with uh, other artists and uh, you know talk with friends and everything. Uh, my wife and um, the chickens were all over the house and she despised <laughs> the sight of the chicken. So I know, uh, but yeah, these this encounters, uh, I think also happened from, from when I was young until now. So I just collected all these um, irritating stories and uh, tried to just compile into one massive phallic installation, you know, so yeah. I think if you had an aerial view, it would just look like yeah, an yeah, arrow. Yeah. It just looked like an arrow. The proposal that I sent to Ilham was aerial view, not okay. side view. So, yeah, I think maybe we have a mirror, then you can see. Yeah. I just have a question um, kind of um, from that. You, I mean, you mentioned that this is to a critique, right, of the irritating stories or the contemporary male, Malay maleness. Like, what about that were you trying to um, generate a conversation about? Yeah. What about contemporary Malay maleness? What are you trying hmm. to talk about? Yeah. I recently became a father, so I think uh, <laughs> not hey, one year already. So, but you know, <laughs> trying to trying to try to find a way to behave uh, and exp um, you know uh, give him a better experience, probably. You know. So um, I think it's personal. It's a personal way to even all the works. Um, it's a personal way to deal with certain issues I have and then um, sort of exorcism, you know, trying to get it out and yeah, yeah, and, 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 and but it's therapeutic I think so to, to just get everything out and 
Yeah, I think is this answer. Yeah, so it's yeah. kind of cathartic. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but I always wonder, and this has been this is a long-standing question about political art: is that uh, is it about your intention as an artist that uh, shapes the meaning, or is it about what people come to the gallery with, right, and how they're reading you? Th that is where where is the politics made? Is it made in your, the design of the work, or is it made in the minds of the audience? And to what extent do you know about how people have you know the reception end of it? It's not just the production end, but the reception end of art making. Uh, I try not to think too much about um, the public's uh, reception before making it or while making it. Uh, Leave it up to, to, to their interpretation. If you know somebody get offended or not offended, then it's okay. And uh, I, I don't know. I, I think I, I, I jump first and then see what happens. Um, sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't work. But it's always a attempt, attempt to to, 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 to create something. But um, yeah, I've never. Yeah, so this, this open-ended thing is because it echoes what Paiman said earlier, right? You say your work and its meaning is open-ended. You're quite happy for people to interpret it in different ways. You have just said the same thing. Yeah. Is, that, is, that, is that a problem for artists? I mean, should artists, should, you know, should have a little more, should there be a bit more muscularity behind the idea? Like you want to kind of impose, like you want to impose your meaning on the world and have it uh, transform it? Not really. <laughs> I mean... I don't want to change the world. I mean, I, I'm an artist. I can't change the world. Let's be realistic. So, but um, yeah, but it's uh, it's an attempt. You get this opportunity, then you try to make a statement. And if that resonates with some one person, then yeah, then you go on from there and and make it bigger. I think. But I don't want to like you must think this way about this. Yeah. So. I mean, Rahel, can I ask you how many people actually walk through a typical exhibition like this? We're talking thousands, right? Huh? Yeah, I mean, I think we've hit maybe 20,000. So 20,000 people are viewing these works, right? How many of them will leave with a deep understanding of um, contemporary Malaysian life? I mean, it's just a question I ask. Okay, we have, um, we have about four minutes uh, before we go on to the next artist. Any other questions? Any? Yes? Um, <clears throat> just going back to the process just now, you were saying, right, you were saying that um, most of it is factory made. So is, is there an intention behind it? Or is it also some sort of a subconscious embodiment of the lelaki Melayu yang suka lepas tangan? What? Lelaki Melayu itu? Yang terhebat. Uh, yang terhebat, yang sometimes <laughs> like to lepas tangan ke. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's a... It's a good thing. Yeah. Lelaki Melayu hebat. Could you explain like, that to cakap, the audience? He, she didn't say hebat. So right? Lepas tangan. Oh, lepas, lepas tangan. tangan. Which means yeah. you, you, you kind of like... I don't know. <laughs> don't take responsibility? Is that what it, it is? She said, yeah. It's a refusal to take responsibility? Uh, Subcontract your work okay, to others. Okay, okay, okay. I understand, I understand. Uh, <laughs> so I have, to, I have to be honest that during the production, I wasn't here. I was in, in residency. But also, it felt natural to just give this instruction to a fabricator to make, and he's a very good fabricator and also a very good artist. Um, but um, I think that 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 works with the work. Your idea of that lepas tangan also, but you know, you don't want to make it literal like this. You know, like uh, this work is talking about literal translations of things. You know, when you have like certain peribahasa, you literally translate it. And yeah, I think uh, you can you can do that. You know, but there also so other things you can translate. You know, so um, but it's nice that you 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 pick up on that lepas tangan. I never encountered this before. <laughs> I mean, there is a bit of, and I, you can see in some of the other works um, here is a kind of uh, literalism. If you like, I mean, it's, it's, it sounds like a criticism, maybe it is, uh, of taking idiomatic expressions and yeah. turning them yeah. into things, right? Um, I mean, that's the artist's choice or the curator's uh, decision to, uh, to have that. But they, they, I don't know if there's a problem with literalism of, of just sort of taking uh, idiomatic, Malay idiomatic expression or any idiomatic expression and just 
sort of make I don't know if it's a problem. I don't know if it's uh, but sometimes too much of it is because it cannot be uh, to me sometimes it's not literal. You know, um my, yeah, and art, uh, yeah. not very nice, not very interesting. Uh, I like yeah, it. Yeah. I don't know about you. Who likes your art a bit twisty, difficult, dense, uh, complicated, confronting? Or do you want to just tell you something? One message, very simple. Hmm. I, I don't know. Yeah. Okay, variety is good. Okay, on that note, thank you very much, uh, Izad Arif. Thank you. Okay, uh, next we have Samuel Tin and. Thea Palin uh, Jaratnam, whose work, this is their work. So if you haven't had a chance to look at it, please have a look at it now while we mic them up. Okay? And give us a minute. Okay. So this is a collaborative work, and uh, Tin and Palin have been collaborating uh, since um, their time at university. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I, I don't know if you want to do like a double handler. You can say a bit about the work, and then you can say a bit about the work, or either way. Yeah, tell us, tell us, tell the tell the audience what what this work is about and what you intended by it. Yeah, um, I think so. When we, I think it it was both of our both our ways of writing a poem for a Ganapati, right? Or for what happened to him, and then. And this is a man who died in in de uh, cust so he's a victim of custodial uh, yes. murder, right? Murder. Yeah, yum, yeah. yum, yum, yum. Um, yes. He died uh, at, he, didn't, he was pronounced dead in Sungai Bolo Hospital. Um, and I think it was a, it was, he, was one, he was one of the many people who uh, were in a series of custodial deaths, right? Um, and it kind of struck a chord because of his name, right? Uh, I think a lot of Hindu children, when they grew up, they were very fond of Ganesha. And it kind of felt like uh, one of the gods had been killed. And it was just like... Uh, yeah, it was this, it was, it was, uh, we were all like very angry about it, I think. Um, yeah, so one year later we sat down and we uh, talked about it, right? Um, and we decided to come up with this. <laughs> I think it was a collage in a way, like we tried uh, a lot like that, like play with a lot of elements and then layer them, layer them, layer them until we felt like, okay, enough. Uh, yeah, this is about... Uh, what we can do, yeah. Okay, so maybe Tin, you could tell us about the, uh, the elements that people uh, are looking at. I mean, some of it's quite obvious. The water, and I understand one of you has been drowning a lot, like, you know, <laughs> but unsuccessfully drowning. Who's the one who's drowned three Me. times? Uh, you, yeah. yes, that's right. So he's had three unsu unsuccessful drowning incidents. I mean, because a proper drowning would mean he's dead, but he didn't, <laughs> obviously yeah. not. Okay, so tell us about the elements in the work. Okay, uh, I'll start with the drowning. Um, I believe... In this room, uh, it's not just me alone uh, who have encountered drowning experience. I believe all of you, um, maybe ma many of you, or everyone have encountered before. Um, and for me, it was very impo important because every part of my drowning experience, um, there's always certain important people in it. Um, and hence why every of my work, what I believe and it needs to have is uh, water. It needs to have that because Water tries to take my life away, but it did not. And hence why I believe that it is trying to tell me something. Um, and definitely there are some people that I have not found who have saved me. And of course, people who I have known who have saved me. And if de definitely have a great reflection on this artwork because um, this artwork is about death, it's about water, and it's about the reaction of um, not just, it's about reaction of Tamir's body. Um, how it was being treated in, um, in Malaysia. And I believe right now, it's, uh, we can agree to that, it's around the world. Um, yeah. So the element you're seeing, um, obviously this is a mirror cupboard. Inside there's an aquarium, there's the water, there's another mirror, and there's a digital video playing. Uh, there are four types of video. Um, the first one, which, which is in around Gombak, police station, um, the housing area, the, um, the people who's living over there, the playground. And then after that is um, the place that we believe is near to the um, automotive bike workshop. And then after that is the chicken at the basin. And the last one is the word of uh, the Tamil word. Yeah. Um, 
Maybe I can add a bit of the, about the water, right? Um, when we started, we really thought um, the water in the works meant um, this one witness uh, that saw what happened to him and how he got arrested and everything and could tell us about it. But I think one week before the show opened, um, one of our collaborators, Sam Azha, suggested, because we, we were in the toilet right here and fetching the water to try it out, and Sam said, hey, maybe we get, because we wanted to add water and make it dirty and all these things, but then he said, maybe we just get the water from the Klang River. River of Life. River, the, yeah, the River of Life. And I think, I think that action kind of uh, summed up what the water means. Like just grabbing it, and just, just grabbing it and trapping it in an aquarium. And I think, yeah, we think this, that's, what is, uh, that what happened, that's what happened to him. And, and um, yeah. Well, so for you, uh, I mean, if you don't uh, already know, um, custodial death is a huge problem in Malaysia in terms of our human rights record. It's been, um, and there's very little resolution to it, despite human rights organizations calling for uh, processes uh, that could um, m mitigate what's happening in these uh, p uh, places of detention. Um, Teo Bing Hock uh, and his death precipitated, I think, uh, um, some artwork, there's been theater around custodial death. So it's a, it's a theme that's been picked up, or it's, a, it's an issue that's been picked up uh, uh, by artists uh, in various uh, ways. Uh, what I was interested in, um, before I get to you, all of you, uh, because I myself have had, had near-drowning <laughs> events in my life, it's, it's curious, an astrologer told me to beware of water, which is terrible because I get dehydrated a lot. Um, <laughs> Um, I want to ask you about the, the question of, of Dravidian bodies. It's something that comes up in the essay uh, with you both. Um, why, why, why focus on the question of the Indianness of the, of the person who died um, as opposed to the question of class, uh, the question of power that operates? Uh, because while Indians are overrepresented in custodial deaths, uh, as you point out, and it's, it's true, um, uh, people of all um, uh, ethnic groups are represented in custodial deaths, but they, they're all overwhelmingly working class. Yeah, um, I think, I think this, this journey, this small little path started when um, um, George Floyd was killed, right? And I think um, I started to go into the space where I was just hyper aware of my skin. It's not like we grew up not being aware of our skin, but you just started analyzing everything, you're stuck at home and you're like, and then you see the parallels between anti-Tamilness and anti-Blackness, right? And so I think I was already in that hate space. And it wasn't like a pleasant hate space because any small thing immediately went to like, it's about race, it's about how Tamil it is, about how Indian it is, you know? And um, yeah, so I think it came from there. And then, you know, the maths was just adding up. It's just like oh, this many Indian people. But also you're right, you know, it isn't just all Tamil people, right? It's I think one interesting thing, one not interesting but weird thing was also the fact that I can make work out of this person's death. I think speaks a bit about um, the difference between the both of us. Um, and that's this, this, I don't know how to, I mean, I don't know how to sit with you it. You mean you feel like you're exploiting his death? Not exploiting, but I think it just says about um, my experience the Tamil person in Malaysia and his experience the Tamil person in Malaysia, you know? The person who died. The person who died and then, yeah. Tin, how do you feel about that? I mean, the, the ethnic Id identity uh, dimension of this particular uh, uh, case, how do you relate to it? Uh, thanks for asking that. I, I believe during the pandemic, uh, I am one of the group of people who is not aware of this case. And this case has been there even before I was even born. It's an ongoing thing. The fact that I didn't know until last year, when this thing is being more spread out, I know that I'm part of the privileged um, group because none of us are discussing about this um, incident. And that gives me the effect of, why are we not? Uh, does it need to take so many people's life in order for me and my group of friends to start discussing about it? Because the fact that now I'm aware, and I believe, and I wish I'm also aware, a lot of my group of people are not talking about it. It, it, um, it gives us the responsibility as, um, as Malaysian 
because when we are not worrying, we are not talking, it really straight away defines that we are privileged. Because those people, especially the Tamil body, out there, when they go to public space, immediately, I believe, they have an effect of knowing that it's a dangerous space. But for me, to go out um, with my group of friends, to just discuss about all kinds of things, that shows um, how surface uh, we have become. So I would say I'm also still in the learning process. Uh, and, I, and I'm also privileged, privileged and honoured to be in this project with Palin so that uh, I can also learn, I can also be aware, and I hope that this space, Ilham Gallery, it's a, it's a one of a safe space for everyone to discuss about it. Um, there's so many people come, I'm also curious about uh, what it come out, but of course, I'm not, I don't want to really, really like, they need to bring that out, but you have to start from us having a very simple step, which is having the conversation, uh, because in order for us to even be here, I believe it's all through conversation as well, and right. social media. I want to ask you, just uh, because um, Tin began with, um, with an assumption that we've all had near drowning experiences. How many of you have had near, a near drowning experience? Put up your hand. So it's actually a minority. So you might have uh, re-examined your uh, assumption. Okay, I want to ask you, anybody else, um, any questions for uh, Tin and, pa and Palin about their work? Yeah. So, so the uh, question is, what is being written? Uh, I don't read Tamil, so I, I yeah. can't translate either. <laughs> so it, uh, this one it reads, Indra Marura Kalinke Kondranar, which means uh, they killed another Kaling today. And then uh, the script before, there's a text before this, which is just a, a bit bolder, smaller word. It's just his name, E Ganapati. Yeah. Why didn't you translate it? Why didn't I translate it? Um, yeah, it just felt like I needed that um, sure. layer of Tamilness in it, but not, yeah, there. <laughs> Tim, do you, do you agree with the strategy of not translating it? Yeah, because we actually <laughs> talked about it. Um, <laughs> I, we actually talked about it, and the reason also we don't want is because if people are curious enough for this work, they will actually, um, you know, search about it or get to know about it, like how you actually ask the question. Um, that's why we don't want to give everything out because same thing, um, we, about this whole custody, we also do not know every, everything about it. None of us know. And um, some, that's also part of the uh, whole process. Can I ask you, are you now surprised that the word of what it says there, and especially the very emotive word "kaling," in which, in a Malaysian context, is kind of a, um, you know, uh, it, it's a, it's a, it's a, yeah. It's, well, how do you feel about it? I grew up in a uh, sekolah kebangsaan, so it's a multiracial school. So I, in a way, was exposed to racism because, unfortunately, because of the teachers. Could you just speak into that? So, because then the people. You're asking me about how I feel about the word "kaling," right? Um, I grew up in a multiracial school and I was exposed to racism actually because of the teachers. So I don't like the word girling honestly because my Indian friends were a bit offended and I felt like that was not nice. Thank you. Okay, any, any other responses to the work? Yeah, uh, take the lady in black over there, she's not said anything and then I'll come to you. You can both ask your questions together actually, okay? Um, I like the rawness of your work. Um, I don't know if it's because I'm ethnic Indian, I connected to it, although personally, I don't know anyone who's been through custodial death. But somehow, I relate to like, the narrative of it. Um, yeah, so my question is, how has the response been from the people who know you and know your work versus people who don't know you and who've been seeing your work? Yeah, because I just want to see how far it resonated. And you can comment, so you can ask your question too, then we can have um, yeah, so I was reading the poetry that was written in English, right? And I felt a lot of sense of longing. And for me, I kind of felt of a, like, even though it was kind of directed to an individual in the way it was written literally, it felt like a longing of like dreaming of, not really specific to Malaysia, but just being 
part of society as normal, the longing to look at being in this place, like I long to feel like I belong here kind of feeling. Could you comment a little bit on that? Yeah, um, Archana, right? Yeah, um, thank you for your question. Um, sorry, you need to be a question again. Ah! <laughs> how do people relate to it? How do people relate to the how, yeah, how the responses and what have the responses been like? Yeah, um, I think a lot of, a lot of our friends um, were surprised because we usually come from the theatre, we make a lot of theatre work and uh, just video work, but not like an installation like this. So they've been just like, uh, I guess it's, ex it's nice to have people extra curious about your work. You know, usually just come in and say, oh, it's good, it's cool, you know, I like this, I like that, but now they're like, oh, uh, why this structure and stuff like that. I um, haven't really heard a lot about people who I don't know yet. But one cool thing I've seen on TikTok, like people just come and checking themselves out and I feel like that's, that's what I'm getting. Even when I come here, so I see a lot of people just checking themselves out and I feel like we knew this would kind of happen or we, or we kind of like that it's happening. You We're know? checking themselves out in the mirror. Yeah. Oh, the vanity <laughs> of people who come to art museums. Okay. They're checking themselves out. I They're mean, not I, checking out the work. No. They're just checking themselves out. Okay. Or maybe just catching a glimpse of their reflection, but I think I like Ooh. that. It's like, oh, yeah. yeah. Mesmerized by it, <laughs> I usually flinch in horror when I see my own collection. <laughs> Ouch. Okay. Yeah, okay. You and, oh, oh, okay. Yeah, I respond to the first question as well. Uh, yeah, I, I also haven't checked, but of course, some of my friends who, who came, uh, they all were curious about what does it mean. Um, of course, that's always the first question uh, they ask. And... The thing is, it's always important to know what they think first um, because so that we can get the understanding. Um, because people actually know, um, they just need some puzzle. Uh, and then when they talk about it, they ask, is it the reaction? Is it the police and stuff like that? That's where, you know, they kind of get... Because when, when they try to, try to think of the process, I think that's more important than giving them the answer straight because that itself... You know, because their goal is to get the answer. And the moment we give it, that's it. It's just, you know, okay, they've done, done their part. But if they think and think and think and they try to process, that's where they actually think through. And uh, for me, uh, of course, there are people who actually, uh, who knows, knows. Uh, people who don't, don't know and they try to think. And I, I think that process is important enough for me already. Yeah. Uh, the poem. Maybe I'll uh, answer Hannah's question about the poem, right? Um, I like that you got a longing. It was, it was that I, I, I felt, it was, it was Rumi's words, um, and I think that part was kind of us thinking of people, uh, Malaysian people, and how they react to a Tamil body, or, or what they project onto a Tamil body, and I feel like it was that, you know, it was this longing to be everything else but itself. Yeah, yeah. I think it's very interesting is the script. I, I found the script quite beautiful and, we, um, and because it's unfamiliar, it's kind of exotic. But uh, Tamil contributions to the Malay language are huge, right? Um, just the number of shared uh, words there. So anyway, we've run out of time uh, with Tin and Parland. Could you thank them? And uh, we're going to go next to Haris Abadi, and whose work is at the end of the corridor over there. All gather on this side of the gallery. We'll have a... Um, a chance to um, get to know Harris Abadi and his work, uh, which is called Surrender, right? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, for, for those of you, I mean, part of the exhibition is also, I think, was a call to reflect on the last two years. Um, the white flag uh, campaign uh, was one of actually several campaigns. There was also a I mean, in the sense of what was going on social media, including Krajan Gagal, that, that you know, government has failed and so on and so forth. So all these were, were appearing. Um, and so for anybody who's been around in the country for the last two years, the white flag almost immediately uh, should invoke, uh, evoke uh, a memory of, the, of this period where Malaysians were, were really asking for help. Um, and, you know, what was interesting also was how government co-ops <laughs> government constantly tries to co-op uh, in their own interests, uh, actually even cr criticisms of government. Well, so, you know, the kita jaga kita is like, we have to rely on ourselves slogan got almost instantly co-opted by, by the ministries yeah. as if it was, it was a tagline for, 
government performing well when in fact it was a, it was a, it was a critique of government, right? So anyway, so all these you know, um, uh, discourses, uh, these um, narratives and counter-narratives uh, were operating over the last two years uh, and they're kind of uh, there in the work in some way. So I could hand you over to Aris, you could help us understand why you chose to um, create this installation, um, which is a bit of a public hazard because you know you can't use the lift and so on. So no, I'm just kidding. So tell us a little about the work, please. Um, okay, assalamu alaikum and good morning. Uh, actually, I was triggered since um, we are all within the lockdown eras of pandemic at a time. And it is the same time when we were asked for Ilham proposal, you know. So it kind of clashed. And at that time, I was triggered by um, a comment from a, 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 a politician figure, which is uh, the Hali Parliament of my hometown in Kelantan, you know. So he, at that time, there there is the there was the. The, the white flag campaign yes, to to ensure some people having hardship can ask for help in a kind of uh, a symbol of sign using white flag so I'm planning to use the white flag as a subject that might represent uh, surrender but uh, the, the the politician did did some comments and it caused outrage in, in in the in the social media, and I tried to take that situation at that time and craft it into a, a story of my own, you know, dealing with uh, surrendering and you know hopelessness, ceasefire or anything that has relation with a uh, white flag as symbols. And when, I, when, when, when Ilham posted it in social media and I shared it into my own Facebook, so some people messaged me because he thought I did this work. I, I, am, I am doing my PhD for five years now and haven't finished yet. So they, they thought I, I am surrendering my PhD. So, so one of my friends commented, eh, relax dulu bro. Sikit lagi, sikit lagi. Eh. Uh, don't surrender yet. Eh. So, so it kind of interesting how people see the idea of, of a white flag. And I did read about white flag in several other cultures and how it, it represents other meanings in different cultures and times. For example, in in Central America countries, during the pandemic time, they use white flag in countries such as Honduras or El Salvador or Guatemala. They use white flag to represent a, a failure or a, a failure in in economy or the government that that failed to 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 manage the country. For example. They drape it on windows, on doors. So they have different meanings and I, I would love people to see it differently based on their experience with white flags. And I did um, stage it in with some debris that I met, a horrible looking debris because I was so, you know, it, it, it's meant to be staged in this way. So think, we came back to to our problems before, you know, when Sharad asked, did, did, did we plan to, the, 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 the audience to get our message instantly or should they interpret by themselves? We always have that kind of um, conflict as an artist, you know. But, I believe when, when, if we listen to music, we don't have to understand the score or the symphony, but we just enjoy the music as, as we should. So I wanted uh, the audience to, 
to create that dialogue between these concrete ruins and debris and with the the flapping white flag uh, flag white flag on the screen and there's also i've been doing a lot of um di digital culture related issues in most of my works so it has the idea of surrendering physicalities and migrating into virtual life you know since we are doing a lot of things in virtually during pandemics we are working online we are shopping online we are communicating and uh, get together um, connecting with families online so we kind of naturally um, comfortable living online so it's in a way it's a kind of reflecting the idea of living physicalities as the end of physicality so uh, represented by those ruins and blocks and debris you know so i mean i want to ask a question i mean because i, I think sometimes when we listen to artists uh, <clears throat> you know um, they're sometimes much more articulate than their work is and this is obviously a problem um, but and, and sometimes it's just the opposite they're not particularly articulate but the work speaks so much and i and i wonder often about strategies right uh, that an artist might have you start with a concept you start with a concern or an emotion and then you find strategies to 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 put that out in the world somehow and, and this is what you've chosen you've chosen are these really concrete are they concrete no, no, no they're no. fake concrete oh they're fake concrete yeah. oh, better okay and then and then that flag because it's a video stream and you say something in, in that again that essay remind you all to read those essays uh you say something you wanted people to ponder the moments in the stream and i thought that was a very interesting um that idea w what is that about what is it that you want people to do with this image is so ubiquitous or something that's so common at least at one period over the last two years so actually in 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 confronting visuals so i've been doing um, research i say about um, loops animation and loops and you know loops like reaction gifs that you've seen in internet you know they, they they loop and loop but you kind of enjoy seeing things looping and you have your own time seeing things like you see a fire dancing you know you have you like a like kind of have your own time to access and to exit the video you know so so the flag is being looped so it's kind of for me, it's, it's, it's like therapeutic, it, it, is, it is being slow mode, it's slow motion, so that you can actually observe each flap, uh, how it's going, you know. So this is, I think this is the specialty of technology. And when video camera come, you know, suddenly you have you can see things in slow motion and you can examine everything of that you couldn't see with your naked eyes so i want i, I want i want people to enjoy that that flag moving at, at, at the same time you know and create connections with its surrounding settings so yeah okay let's, let's, you know. uh, let's turn to the audience now um any questions for uh harris uh, untuk kedudukan artwork ni, okay. ada proses uh, siapa yang decide untuk ada kat sini? Oh. Ah, okay. Oh. In the placement of the artwork, why? So who was who, right? Yeah. yeah. Who decided on the placement of the art in this corridor? Is the question I think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think that question should be given to Ilham <laughs> but, okay, okay. Well, but, but I was yeah well, we, did you agree with it I mean it was is this where you would have put it because the question of where you at the first time when you see your work is installed beside the women's washroom <laughs> so it's kind of why am I my work is placed there but when 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 I see the other setting and uh, all the other works are crammed inside and I think I have a lot of space 
for audience to actually sit and watch that video in 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 their own time so i think i i really like it to be here and so anyone want to use the washroom again <laughs> okay, but i, I have no you, problem with you, it do you have a problem with the placement yeah uh yeah. dan fikir yeah. anda ini uh, sesuai atau tidak sesuai uh, itu itu bukan persoalan dia juga kan eh? tapi uh, material yang digunakan tu kan pada kalau saya tengok tu kan macam yang sebenar mm. tapi di, bila ada conversation ni baru tahu yeah. itu kan dan uh, karya ni nampak macam dia nak ada trigger dan gangguan-gangguan daripada material daripada uh, bendera putih itu kan itu kalau diletak di bawah kita tak tahu respon dan kita dengar 20000 bawah orang. dekat lantai bawah ah, ya mungkin dekat ground floor dekat yang Isa ada benda punya itu uh, kan. Capoy, itu kan? So bendera putih pula tu kalau kat luar respon dia mungkin lain. So kat kedudukan karya tu ya pasti ya. tak tahu kalau kalau saya ya untuk kita bermain dengan ni kalau tidak dia akan jadi macam white box yang kita another canvas yang yeah. Okay so the question is does the placement of the work i mean you're actually asserting that the placement of the work changes the way it's read yeah, yeah? okay okay ini bukan uh, cuma fikiran-fikiran yang macam itu kan tempat yang agak corner corner itu kan itu, itu, itu bersedia untuk dilihat bukan untuk mengacau atau apa tapi kalau di sini di ruang orang keluar itu kan itu okay okay so So I don't know if you can hear this but what he's saying is that if it was placed in the middle somewhere where it would be disruptive it's in fact placed at the corner which makes it less disruptive but though, is that the right interpretation yeah, yeah. what you're saying okay I think yeah the, the, the context play is all part in giving additional meaning to to the work I mean this might be meaning that you surrender and you went out to go to the leaf you know It, 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 add up, it adds up to your meaning, but I think I have I have no problem with external addition of. Yeah, yeah. ada ada kita ada bincang, tapi maybe I I couldn't get the the real idea of the space. Huh? But I actually find as long as it that the the surrounding context does not. Um, tidak kacau the, the original intention of the meaning eh. Okay, it doesn't undercut it lah. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so it might not enhance it, but it doesn't undercut it. I yeah. guess maybe. Okay, surrender to your bladder and go to the toilet. Okay, you can also surrender to love, by the way. Uh, okay, any other, any other? Thank you so much. Any other comments or uh, questions for Harris? Okay. So uh, I'm curious because the first time you explained about this artwork, the first thing that triggered you wasn't like the first time um, the rakyat made the white flag campaign. It's because one of the politicians said something about this um, white flag thing. Um, because the one that I remember that triggered a lot of people on, I mean, I'm on social media, right? on Twitter, people are being very, very, how to say, not political more like enraged about what he said the one i remember was when he said kita kalau nak minta pertolongan atau nak berserah berserah pada tuhan it was was that it was or what was it that triggered you what the, 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 the question is can you hear the quote did you hear the question in the back basically what the politician said that triggered him to do this artwork uh, that's my question okay okay i think that's that's one of the thing that triggered me you know It's like how you can manipulate more social media and create your own agenda and something like that. It deals a lot with the saliva of Waiman's work, I think. And but but I have no problem with that statement. I'm not taking that particular statement into my work, you know. But it triggers me at that time. So. Um, Yeah, we, we can we can talk about. Is that. there a difference between being triggered and being inspired? Uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe it has the same effect. You know, inspired or triggered. Triggered is more 
ish go on yeah, the something like that you know so but the problem with me is that when i want to tell stories i want people to get it you know so so there's there's always problem of in in outside of practicing in real life i want to tell good stories i don't i don't like people to uh, cannot get what i'm saying you know but at the same time in the, in this kind of context i would like people to think differently because i am not always here so so i would love uh, well, i would love the, the work to be open ended in, in the same time mm. Mm. so you want it open ended but you also want people to understand exactly what you're saying when you say i mean when you tell your story i mean is yeah. th- when that initially that that intention does it force you towards a kind of literalism does it force you to kind yeah, of just yeah. say exactly so nobody is confused about what you're saying no ambiguity i think i i will go in the middle it's like a knowledge in the form of a movie for example you can enjoy a movie and get intrigued by the content of uh, what you see and you extend your experiences by googling all other trivias about the, the film and so for example if people are interested in the visual i believe they will go and find more about the intention of the artist and so what i need to do i think what i need to do is to get the visual engaging or spark some curiosity you know like seeing a uh, black chickens of is i think it catch my curiosity i want to know what what's the chicken about and and, and to see paiman's work for example if, if we see about in, in previous presentation i mean how you is the politics of the image how we want people to to be interested in what you you display and ask for more yeah Okay, very quick question. We're running out of time. Yes. I just had a thought. Um, because we saw the white flag as a symbol of surrender, kan? Of uh, giving up ataupun perlu pertolongan. Tapi because the politician said that, basically saying don't do it, kan? And then we keep doing it. It's also a symbol of defiance, no? And kind of like protest at the same time. So it's like both defiance and surrender, which I think is quite um, rich. Yeah. Aha. Pun intended. It's a comment rather than a question. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Haris Abadi. Okay, now we have um, uh, Umku Iman. Uh, his work is there, I think. So again, if you go to the to the catalog of essays and discussions, it uh, Kat Khalid is the one who uh, talked wrote Kat Ramat. Sorry, Kat uh, Ramat. Kat Khalid is another person. Um, and uh, and it, it's very interesting that you know you kind of begins with you saying oh. Well, I don't really have much to say. So this might be the shortest of our sessions if we, we if we let her go easy. Uh, you know, if we go easy on her and and let her off. Uh, so we're not going to do that because you're going to have to do your 20 minutes. I'm sorry, young lady. Okay. So here's the work um, in play, and yeah. it's it's wonderful that it it plays on both uh, Tanaliat, the idea of clay, and it's also I mean the title does. And so Bali Batu, another and more kind of Malay idioms, right? Uh, and you know, and Nia because it's intention and and so on and so forth. So there's a lot of play on words here and meaning. Could you could you could you help us understand what 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 people are looking at? Yes. Um, sorry. Before I start, uh, I kind of have a sore throat, so I might make this short because. Oh, I see. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she's finding it out for no, herself. Because, it's all right. We'll let no, you struggle through the hopping. gravity voice. It's okay. And stuff. So okay. I don't want to embarrass okay. myself. Uh, okay. So <clears throat> the work is called Tanah Niat. Uh, uh, if <clears throat> basically Tanah means uh, represents clay. And niat means intention. So, <clears throat> what I'm trying to do here is that uh, the work represents my non-verbal communication between the Jawi text and design. <clears throat> so, basically, I have arranged the Jawi letters in a repetitive manner. And this is how. 
Yes, uh, it's actually the letter ah. Ha in Jawi. Ah. So as as I have uh, arranged it in a repetitive manner, it represents laughter. <clears throat> yeah. So it's ha 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 ha. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, well, I, repeti repetition is something that I enjoy, and <laughs> sorry. It is the it's basis of patterns, right? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> um, what else am I trying to say? Well, the the main thing about me with this work is that uh, the is the process behind it. I created this mold uh, of the Jawi letter and like <clears throat> I cut the clays of the Haz and you know it's it's sort of like um, ritualistic in nature. And <laughs> other than that, um, I had like plenty of help from my sister and my partner who's here today. <laughs> so I want to thank them. But anyway, um, it's. Um, it's just, this work is just basically me laughing. So that's it. Okay, so if you read the, the piece, which is actually a wonderful um, um, interview with uh, Imam, uh, is that you, you get a sense of an artist who's reluctant to, as you say, overthink your work, uh, maybe talk too much about it. I mean, you're constantly demurring and saying, oh, it's not, what is it anyway? It's okay. The apa sangat. You know, this kind of nonsense. And you go on and on in this way. And it, it, it's actually quite interesting because we live in a, in a culture, especially around visual art and art in, in general, where there's a lot of overthinking, over theorizing, over speaking. Uh, you know, involving not just artists, but curators, uh, critics, and so on and so forth, right? So, um, okay, so, so we're not going to let you off yet, because there are questions that I'm sure the audience has for you in terms of um, uh, your process or yeah. in terms of the work itself. Uh, does anybody have a question? Could I? Yes, please. Um, let me say a little bit about why you use this Jawi, um, you know, why, why Jawi and why this particular? Right. Uh, so, um, the last few years, I have, I have been really into um, design and uh, typography. So, I like to like uh, experiment with like uh, letterings and stuff like that. So, I like to like make things <coughs> with like letters and from, you know, like different languages and stuff. Uh, basically, that's just it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, and maybe I, I don't know, many of you, who'd recognize, who reads Jawi here? And who'd recognize the ha? Did you, immediately it's recognizable as ha? <laughs> okay. Honestly, it's because not. like the ha, this is when you write it in a continuation. Chonto, uh, chonto. In the middle of yeah, the sentence. Yeah, it's the middle of the sentence, not like the first. Oh, okay, so it's when single? the letter yeah. 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 is in, in the middle. Yeah, okay. but also I meet the, fir the first and last has. Mm. You know, the, the, the other are has and, sorry. <clears throat> I tried to put it in this work, but I just feel like it doesn't like, you know, match. For me, I, I just yeah, like, don't like, like the way it looks. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so any other questions? I mean, about, okay. Uh, I would like to ask, uh, why did you choose the red background? Like, was there a particular reason? Uh, or the red okay, background. so like the look of the whole work is that I wanted it to look like it's some sort of like a songket pattern. Because I want to, I, I, I'm working with pattern, so <clears throat> the, the, there's no literal meaning behind the red color. It's just that it's, um, it's, I, it's the contrast of the color with the clay. Okay, so one thing you do reveal in your interview is that you have, uh, you're an angry person, you say, and that you've been angry for a very long time, and that you, you want to stop being angry. <laughs> Is that in the work? Is, is, is this an angry ha 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 ha? No, is it because like a what I was explaining to Kat the other day, um, back then I was always critical with my work. <coughs> so 
I kind of want to like not get into that. Like I don't want to be like overthinking about something that doesn't even exist yet. So it when I overthink about uh, a piece of work, and it will lead me to into not making it. You know what I mean? Like um, like uh, it doesn't end up the way I want it to. You know. So with this work, I try to make it like you know more subtle. Because uh, I have like friends who come up to me and say that you know your work is different now. It used to be really like I wouldn't call it deep lah, but but you know most people call it abra and stuff. But I don't like to see it that way anymore. It, so could you say the word again? What is it? Art berat. Art berat. Heavy art. Heavy art. Art berat. Yeah. Oh yeah. berat. Okay, the word Malay. Okay, Malay. Okay. Yeah. Art berat. Okay. Any anybody else have a response to this work, or a question for Imam about her process, um, her, her um, repudiation, if I can use that strong word, of art berat. Uh, I mean, there are all kinds of there's all kinds of interesting implications from your your general demeanor and attitude towards the, towards art making. That's quite interesting. Any other any questions? Okay, so we actually only have nine minutes left. I, I wonder, I, I, since we're coming to the end of this, I, I stay here. I want to ask the other artists to come up. Uh, if you could just, uh, if any questions, because uh, for those of you who've come this morning and have now walked through the art, uh, and spoken to some of the artists, there are many things here. If there are questions that now emerge uh, from the earlier discussion, is Paiman here? I know Izad is here, and I'm going to call him. Uh, Harris, you want to come up and just maybe take the last? Harris, uh, Izad, squatting is not going to, I can see right through this house. OK, come, come. So in the last uh, five minutes, we can talk. Uh, if there are any other questions you want to pose uh, to, the, uh, to the artists? Um, this is your chance. Any questions? Or just a thought, I mean, that you want to post to them about what you, you've seen or, or the way in which... Um, you can even ask Rahel uh, questions about the way the, the art was placed against each other. Were, were they meant to be in dialogue? These are questions you can ask about an exhibition. And did you have a sense that there was a dialogue here? Is it a dialogue that you're interested in? Now that everyone has questioned you about your work, how does it feel like to be questioned about your work? How do you, how does it feel? Do feel you, like, it, yeah. To be questioned about your work. Yeah. yeah. This is for everybody. Does anybody want to take that? Do, do you find the, this interaction with, uh, with the public uh, uh, useful, annoying, uh, terrifying? Um, anybody? Any of you guys want to? Um, yes, I mean, I, I think. Thank you. Um, it's really exciting to like talk to people about your work, uh, especially in Malaysia. We don't really get that dialogue a lot. Um, you, even if if it's a post show conversation, usually it's very muted, or a few people answer, ask questions. So I think it's nice uh, to hear about your work or talk about your work. Um, also, because I think a lot of the works are like puzzles, so we want you. We want to talk. I think mm -hmm. I want to talk to people <laughs> and find out what you make of the puzzles, right? Yeah, Tin. Do you do you like talking to people about the work, <laughs> about your work? Um, the reason why I'm, why I'm here is also because I'm ready to answer some of the questions. But of course, uh, I don't mind talking to people. It wasn't just in your contract. Uh, <laughs> no. Uh, uh, I'm available to the. <laughs> uh, but, uh, He's but, available. But, okay, but, on that but, note, I'm grabbing yeah. the mic from you. <laughs> okay. Is that? Tell us. Was it useful? Yeah, um, quite useful um, to talk and to answer some questions and to give some justification. Yeah, but. <coughs> yeah, <laughs> I think it's good. <laughs> <laughs> 
I think it's interesting to have dialogues because it opened up new meaning sometimes that we we are not aware of about our own work you know but and because sometimes we are too self-centered like watching our photograph of class you know we only watch our face our own face in a way it's me ways me but sometimes when we have dialogues then we we tend to see the bigger picture of it and i think it, it's always helping to have this kind of dialogue yeah oh my god that's so true isn't it we all look at ourselves in our own yeah. in the class photograph yeah, yeah. but what what about you i mean i mean you seem again because you you've i know you have a car but uh, apart from that i mean what what would you as an artist get from a process like this where you're encountering the public the public mm. <clears throat> well usually people don't really ask me questions um they tend of course when they don't understand they would ask me questions now but i'm not used to like speaking <laughs> to like a lot of people like this so um also uh Well, you know, like it's good to be you know, like in front of everyone to like just like answer questions I guess. I don't know what else. If you under pressure. Okay, pai ma. I don't know what else. Okay. So pai ma. At berat. You know. So the question actually was um what is it? What was the question again? What uh what do you get from uh from this process speaking to the public? Is it something that you find as an artist valuable? Actually, I need a public. Uh, anyway, I explain my work, but they have another uh, opinion regarding about it. It's good for the publics, but anyway, uh, I just—it uh, might be we just stand here as an a person. It might be special bit <laughs> uh, to deliver something creatively to uh, to the to the society. Uh, and then also uh, we can see what we are doing at the moment is regarding about the current issues. So how the artist impulses the thing to make an artworks. Okay, I'm going to stop you there. There we have like uh, I'm going to do a quick round, and I'm going to ask each of the artists to talk about or point out a work other than your own that you liked and why. So in like one minute, could you tell us, Tin? Which other work in this exhibition you liked? This is the Harris Abadi challenge. You might not have noticed anybody else's work but your own. So, what work did you like here, and why? Thank you for letting Put me it. start first. Because <laughs> you're available. Uh, yes, I am. Um, I like the color pencil, the one over there with all the paper on top with different color. The fact that I like that is not just because of the paper, but the color pencil that it was um, lined up over there. I thought that was a very brilliant idea. Um, it gave us the the sense of process, um, even when the artist is not present. But the color pencil, the color pencil itself, it's a big artist and that is present 24 hours over there. Great. So that's Sisi Kwa's uh, work over there. Okay. Yeah. Um, not because we're standing right here, but this piece over here, um, behind the hell. Ah, ah the um, the grave. Yum. Yeah, I think in aluminium foil. Okay. Only because it makes you become really quiet when you reach it. Um, I think that's quite special. Okay, so it puts you kind of in a meditative yeah. state. Is it? Do you have Do you have a work here that you like? Yes. Uh, but to be honest, I haven't seen the show in its entirety. But uh, what attracts me is the the one outside. Uh, it's like this huge um, sculpture made from a uh, what? Coconut Wahab. Coconut Wahab. Some students' yeah. work, is it? Some students' work. Yeah, that's real cool. Okay. Um, you, why? Why? Did you say why? No, no, no. I, I mean, like, you, I just like the look of it. <laughs> you like the look of it, yeah. Well, but okay. I haven't seen it. I, I'll go see later. Uh, yeah, I like um, Hasanul's. Uh, mountain pencil uh, cuz because i couldn't imagine myself doing that on this uh, amount of uh, paper and to just black out everything so i told him this is an, an this is like a endurance work you know i 
uh, tip my hat to him because I I won't be able to do it, you know. So yeah, okay, it's my so favorite. Yeah. Artists impressed with other artists. Harris, what did you like? Well, I think this is unfair. I'm, I'm forcing myself to choose one actually. I love my own work. But, it's the best. <laughs> <clears throat> but I think I resonate well with uh, Azaha Ibrahim's video art showing monsoon characters of the East Coast because ah. I, I'm from East Coast. So it catch my... With the kids and the yeah, debris the kids washing on the sea. Aerial view of the sea. I think I, I, I'm... I'm <laughs> okay, very good. Thank you for the COVID. Okay, and the news. <laughs> Fireman, what, what, what work do you like here? I like this one. This is the miniature. Yeah, the miniature. Because it reminds me in a different context of miniature painting. Yeah, and then he make it as a locality uh, narrative. Only that, yeah. Okay, yeah, it's a fine, fine piece. Okay, Mogul miniatures. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, just like to thank all the artists uh, for coming this morning. And also, um, I don't need the second mic, but I'm going to use it because it's just comfortable that way. Uh, thank all of you for being here. And all of your questions, if the artists are uh, still around, I guess you can still talk to them if they want to speak to people. Um, but uh, yeah, and I'd like to thank Rahel uh, and Ilham Gallery for putting this together. <laughs>